<laughs> this is the 24th Sunday after Pentecost, and we thank everyone who is joining us and supporting us through the televised broadcast. And for those of you who I've been lucky to meet in the community, I love it when you introduce yourself to me, and I just hope that you continue to do so. Welcome to worship this, the 24th Sunday after Pentecost. Almighty God, the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. Help us to prepare for your coming among us, that we may be ready. Lord Jesus, through faith in you, we have perceived the promise of eternal life. Forgive us when we think of our salvation depends on what we think, feel, or do. Holy Spirit, teach us to follow Jesus Christ and not to be afraid of giving all that we are that we may trust in him. Turn our hearts to Christ, that we may humbly serve him. Let us take a moment to pause in reflection. Our Heavenly Father knows that we have sinned by what we have done and by what we have left undone. He sent his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, that through faith in him, we might be prepared for his coming as a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority. I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our love, <laughs> the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you are always more ready to hear than we are to pray, and give us more than we deserve or desire. Teach us to come to you as your servants and trust in you to give us the increase that we may be prepared for your arrival. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, World when we have been. Amen. Family movie night is uh, November 30th, and we have a video about that. Sweetland, a love story of ideals, of believing and belonging. Inga, even though you've never met this man, Olaf, are you ready to get married? Um, she only speaks this much English. Mm, she's German. 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 <laughs> Look. Hey! That, that, let, let her have it. Those are my things. Unless you don't pay your mortgage. We'll pay after the harvest. Oops, yes, you have. I have work. I don't have dreams. <coughs> this is her place now. How can it be? You can let it be. I married in my heart, I believe. Movie night, and we will have activities for children um, 
as well as a meal provided before, and we'll soon have a sign up for the meal just so that we can get a head count. Last Christmas time is near. Have a holly jolly Christmas, and a kiss you didn't hear. And may all your Christmases be wise. Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas everybody. everybody. Hey, Bobby, why are we here doing this for that crazy Michael? You got your guess as good as mine. <laughs> we need to announce the Christmas party coming up on December 9th, right? Oh, you're right, it is. That's almost time. Okay, what time? Four o'clock for hors d'oeuvres, is it? Ooh, we're gonna have a cocktail over? Yeah, but you know, we're in the church, so I don't think they allow us to have wine. Okay, how about hot cider? Hot cider sounds good. Oh, okay, that sounds great. And then we're going to have roast beef dinner. And entertainment. The entertainment's going to be members from the church that can do various entertainment things. Okay. Anybody I know? Well, now. <laughs> <laughs> I know there's been a request to have Raleigh and I sing. <laughs> oh, that would be great. Okay, any other special guests that we're going to have? Santa you? Claus. Isn't he coming to take pictures? Oh. Oh, but we can't forget the kids because oh, the kids right. are free and the day will be daycare with for the children because they're going to have their own little thing going, their own little mini party going on in the sanctuary. So buy your tickets early because we do have limited seating. You'll be able to buy them after the services, all, all services, before and after and on, out of the office, right? Correct. And we'll see you on December 9th at 4 o'clock and see what else we have planned for entertainment.
Gospel according to Matthew, the 25th chapter. Glory Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, For it is as if a man going on a journey summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, each according to his ability. And then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received five talents came forward bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I've made five more talents. And his master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your, your master. The one who had two talents also came forward, saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I've made two more talents. And his master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter in the joy of your master. And then the one who had received one talent came forward, saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow, gathering where you did not scatter. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. His master replied, you wicked and lazy slave, you knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow, that I gather where I did not scatter? Then you ought to have invested the money with bankers, and on my return, I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one with ten talents. For all those who have, more will be given and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, uh, even that which they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Well, there was a uh, man and a woman that... um, They had been married 45 years, and they decided to go on a trip, and so they went on this uh, beautiful little trip. They stopped at a a nice little diner for breakfast, and after they stopped at the diner, they got their, uh, they uh, got in the car and went down the road. 25 minutes later, all of a sudden, the wife turned to the husband and said, oh my goodness, I forgot my my purse. Has this ever happened to anyone? No, okay. (laughs) Forgot my purse. And, um, oh, he couldn't believe it. He kind of laid into her, and for 25 minutes, he talked about how he, she should have remembered, and on and on and on. And then uh, they got to the, uh, the restaurant, and upon arriving, the, the, um, the woman there, the, uh, uh, the, what do you call them? Waitress. Waitress, thank you. <laughs> Blanking. The waitress says, um, I'm so glad you came back. I just found your purse, and here you go. And, um, and then she turned to the man and said, and here's your wallet. You left it at the counter. <laughs> yeah. Often we, uh, we look to the other person, and we think, oh, well, they've, they've messed up. They've messed up. It's all, all their fault. They can't believe that uh, they did this. And I actually called up uh, Pastor Nest again to get that joke all straightened out. He gave me about three other jokes, too. <laughs> Two of which I can't say, but... <laughs> you know, how are we to understand our relationship with God? Is it, is it one that we have to worry about uh, what's going to take place next? We just heard uh, different... Uh, in the last few weeks, uh, we've heard uh, the parables about the talents, the ten maidens, the wedding garment, the wicked tenants the workers in the vineyard, the unjust steward, the prodigal son, all these are teaching us what it means to be in relationship with Christ and, and how that informs our lives. That is, these stories are vivid and normal stories that stay in your mind and you think about them time and time again. 
we think that we might have it all together, but but sometimes we realize that it's not it's it's about ourselves. We have to change. It's not about the other person. And so we hear uh, the scriptures from the Old Testament today that those who, who say in the hearts the Lord will do no good, nor will he do harm. That is, they don't fear the Lord at all. They figure that he's just there. He's a nice, uh, benevolent um, God, and they really don't give any power to God whatsoever because he's not able to do anything. But there's a warning from Zephaniah. The great day of the Lord is near. It's near and hastening. The sound of the day will be like, uh, like a trumpet. The Lord is bitter. The warrior cries aloud. That day will be wrath, distress, anguish, ruin, devastation, darkness, gloom, clouds, thick darkness. It even ends with this. Um, the fire of his passion will consume the whole earth. Full and terrible end will be, be made to all the inhabitants of the earth. You know, Stephen Hawking came out and he said that there will be an end to the earth and he predicted about when it's going to take place. And we were talking about that in the office and someone said, oh, I don't want to think about it, which is okay. Who wants to think about that day? There are movies made about that, you know? And yet that day will sometime come. And when it comes, we place our trust in the Lord. We place our trust in what he has done. As a matter of fact, in 1 Thessalonians it says, but he has destined us not for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. It's not what you have done. It's not how good you are. It's not how moral you are or intelligent or anything else. It's about what Christ has done and that he claims you as his own. Now he's given you talents. Talents uh, have a 21st century understanding, that is, those gifts and abilities that you have in your life. But when they talked about a talent in, in uh, Christ's time, they knew that it was 15 years of normal labor. And so when the um, master leaves and he goes on a trip and he uh, entrusts to the slaves what is his own, all of his wealth, Ten, uh, ten, five talents for one, two talents for another, and then one talent. But he gives it to them in uh, a proportion to their ability. And so he leaves. He's a wise master. He has a relationship with them. He knows that he can trust them. Actually, it's no ordinary slave that would receive talents, which is 15 years labor, so that they can invest it for the master. They have to be extremely wise, shrewd intelligence. They have to understand that, that uh, how they can make a, a profit out of that. Not only that, but they have to be trusted with the master. And the sum of that money shows that God is merciful. The master is God or, in the, or, or Christ. And in this, we see that uh, Jesus says, you know what? I have a mission for you and I'm entrusting this to you so that you might follow, that you might Trust in me all the more. And so two of the, the servants risk everything. They invest the money. Five talents for one, two talents for another, knowing that they might lose everything and the master would be displeased with them, but they regain just as much as they had placed in. The third one has no relationship with the master. In the sense that he, he doesn't, he, he's trying to save himself. So he thinks to himself, if I simply bury it, if I bury it and make sure that it's safe, and then when he comes back, I'll just give him the same amount that he gave me, and then I'm in the clear. I'm going to save my own skin, and I don't want any skin in the game at all. I'm going to just simply uh, take care of his, his venture, and that me means. You know, that's, that's uh, realizing that, that God provides for our needs, and yet not, not participating in that. That's not understanding that in a 21st century understanding of it, that the Holy Spirit guides us, that we may trust in the Lord all the more, that he, risks, he asks us to risk everything or give everything up for him. So that the truth is we have skin in the game. It makes a difference. Now, I met with a bunch of, and so did Pastor Sarah, with a bunch of uh, confessional Lutheran pastors this week, and it was, uh, we, we hosted the, the uh, event here, and we uh, go around to the different churches every single month 
except I don't because it's, sometimes it's too far to travel. And, and there, so there's a joke that the only time I ever show up is when it's here, which is just fine. <laughs> but it was here, so I was there. And, and um, so we got together, and, and Michael said to me, how do, you, how do you do it? They're all pastors. How do you preach to a pastor? And I said, well, they're just ordinary people, you know? They just think they're smarter. <laughs> And we talked about this gospel, and we talked about what it meant, and, and these, these guys have all been through the fire. They all laid it on the line for what they believed in. They stood up against bishops and against um, hierarchy, and they said, this is what I believe, and I'm calling the church to reform. And they were all kicked out. They are all defrocked which is just fine, because their churches are growing now. It's amazing to see how God is blessing them. And I reminded one of them, I said, uh, you, I remember when you came into the, the office and we were sitting down and talking, he said, you know, I don't know if it's worth it. He said, uh, they killed the prophets. And I said, uh, well, they haven't killed anybody lately. <laughs> And he said, it's not a very good outlook. And his church is growing. Because he risked not, he didn't dig a hole and bury it and say, these are our traditions, so we'll just keep the traditions. Instead, he invested it. He gave everything. He said, I will follow you. And this is what Christ calls us to do, to follow him. Even though sometimes it doesn't make sense, we have to risk our very lives as we follow. So we shouldn't, be about, uh, we shouldn't be anxious about failing because it's the Holy Spirit that continues to guide us and, and uplift us when we need it most. He is there to give us the strength that we need from day to day. It's not about our own personal security or taking a solace in traditions or saying, well, it's always been that way. So let's not rock a boat. We're simply fo uh, following Christ. And in the end, I reminded these pastors that they'll hear, well done, good and trustworthy slave, for you've been trustworthy in a few things. I'll put you in charge of many things. And I said, don't get, let your head get, head get too big because you're all slaves. That is, there is no thanks. Huh? You're doing what you're called to do. Just follow. It's that simple. Follow. Jesus uh, encourages us to realize that it's not about ourselves, that it's about the gospel getting forth, that there's no one else that's going to bear this word. God's love is not about how intelligent you are. If it were, then only certain people would be um, saved and, and you would be able to reason your way to God. It's not about your moralism or how how uh, you have everything put together and an understanding of, of God and how good you are in this world because I know really good people that have no faith whatsoever. It's not about how holy you are, how separate you are from others, or how you feel about your faith, because the truth is sometimes you feel as if Christ is walking with you, and sometimes you feel as if you're all alone. That's what the, the, uh, the poem Footsteps in the Sand is all about, huh? You've all been through that. It's about God's love that has no boundaries. Roy Hirschfeld, the second, my old prophet, Luther, said, um, there is no confusion in the roles of the servant and master. There's no contradiction. Paul explains in 1 Corinthians 3, 5, after all, who is Apollos? Who is Paul? We are simply God's servants by whom we are led to believe. Each one of us does the work that the Lord has given us to do. And so at this pastor's meeting, we were reminded of, of the promises that we have in Christ. There was uh, many years ago, I was at another pastor's meeting, and uh, as we sat there, uh, one pastor came forward. He said, you know, um, there's something that happened when I was in high school, and it still bothers me today. And um, he started to get angry about it, and he said, I just don't understand. And 
So one of the pastors said, well, in the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. And he paused. And then another pastor said, in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, your sins are forgiven. And he started to cry, and he put his hands to his face as he cried. As he understood for the first time that he was forgiven in Christ for what had happened when he was in high school, even though he had proclaimed it his whole life. That's the beauty of the gospel, see. It comes alongside of us and reminds us that this word is for you. You are forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. You are called to give him everything. We are simply his slaves. He is the master, the one who created all that exists. And there is no greater place than to be in his service. But do not fall asleep. Put on the breastplate of faith and love, the helmet of hope, the hope of salvation, for God has destined us not for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. And one day we'll stand in his presence, and there will be a joy beyond anything on this earth. And we'll hear from him, well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I'll put you in charge of many things. Enter in the joy of your master. Until that day, remember, you are no ordinary slave. You are called into his service. So be it, Lord. Amen. Lord, make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.